Welcome to round seven of the European Track Racing Championship in Belgium. The Circuit Zolder was opened in 1963, the tradition steep circuit in the Limburg region, which is four kilometers long nowadays, has been the venue of many thrilling races in its rich history. The situation in the European Track Racing Championship standings is no less thrilling. 13 points separate chief title contenders Jochen Hahn and Adam Latsko after six of the nine rounds. Latsko failed to cut the gap to Hahn in his home race in the Czech Republic. There is growing pressure on Latsko with regard to the title. I think it's most it's uh, good for me and also for Jochen. We come to the most with uh, 13 points uh, loose and after the most it's same. Like, uh, when we don't go to the most, maybe it's same. And we will see now in the solder. The solder is really nice circuit, old circuit. And I like here, and we will see how we finish. Everything's going according to plan for Jochen Hahn from Germany. However, that success is not a coincidence, but the result of hard work. In the summer break, we have a lot of tests, and we know Although we know before the break we need a little bit more speed in, in the races and in the time practices and we found it and yeah I'm very happy 13 points in front so now I must handle it the last races in the end you know when, when I have one point in front after Le Mans I'm the champion. It looks like either Hahn or Latsko will seal the championship title but third place is hard fought. Norbert Kirsch reclaimed third position in the overall standings, but he was not satisfied with his yield. Oh yes, in the Czech, in the Czech Republic uh, I had a really difficult weekend, I made a couple of mistakes and uh, also the characteristic of the, of the circuit there is not really uh, our favourite with, with our current package now. So we lost a little bit of points compared to Rene, but we are still in third position. The circuit here in Solder is a little more challenging, I think. Maybe I will have a, a little bit of an advantage, but also the characteristic is very, very hard. So I don't expect this weekend to be easy. It's been the best season for Rene Reinert in his truck racing career so far. His mistake in Hungary cost him crucial points for the championship, but he's optimistic for the Belgian Truck Grand Prix. Actually, I like Solda. Um, it's a really nice racetrack here, and you need all the time a lot of things uh, to be successful. You also a little bit of luck, and you never know before what will happen. Anthony Janjek is in Kish and Ryan at Slipstream. He too is 11 points short. Just uh, 11 points uh, with uh, Ronnie Reinert. Uh, it's good for the future for Zolder. I want to uh, win one race for the free place in championship. The races in the 2016 season have been full of thrilling battles and action behind the top group too. The battle for the Super Pole reveals the driver's actual pace in Zolder for the first time. As expected, Hahn and Latsko dominate the event. Latsko has a slight advantage, being one-tenth faster than Hahn. However, he's not as happy as you might think with his hard-won pole position. Maybe here is the better as the second place. And we will see after the first start. I think it's a very interesting start from front of us and we will see today evening. The championship duel, Latsko versus Hahn, goes on in Zolder. On the front row for the first race, Latsko the pole sitter, Hahn alongside. Oh, I'm in the, in the first row on the second place. Now I need a brilliant start and then we will see what happens. René Reinert was quick in qualifying, wrapping up third position. Alongside him is Anthony Janjek. On the third row, Stephanie Halm alongside Norbert Kirsch. The latter is not entirely satisfied with his position. Yeah, not really happy about it. 
But yeah, the characteristics of this circuit is um, yeah, it's really hard and it's not good for you know our current uh, package that we have. The formation lap underway. The pace truck heads in before the long start finish straight. The field is lined up. The lights go green. Who will be the leader at turn one? Latsko makes best use of pole position, retaining his lead. Janiek and Kurzib run into the gravel trap, raising a lot of dust. Hahn and Latsko are in a head-to-head -head battle. Hahn passes on the inside in the Lucian Bianchi Bocht, taking the lead. Behind them, René Reinert has problems. His top speed is too low. Halm, Kurba and Genieck pass him. Kish hits the side of Reinert's truck in the small chicane, forcing him to use the kerb. The drivers finish lap one in the following order. Hahn ahead of Latsko, behind them Halm, Janiek and Kurba in a battle, followed by Kish. Hahn and Latsko have a similar pace in the following laps. None of the two has a clear advantage. René Reinert and John Hemming head into the pits on the fourth lap and Reinert retires. It's big disappointment for the logistics company owner. The technical problem with the speed limiter. My truck was only 140 km per hour fast. So it's not enough to, to have a race. So actually we go 160. Yeah, um, so I must give up my race. Hahn and Latsko are still locked together at the top. The chief contenders for the championship title are racing in a class of their own once again. Steffi Halm in third place fails to match their pace. Anthony Janek is put under pressure by Gert Kurba, but the Iveco driver has not yet found a way to pass the Frenchman. Behind them, Norbert Kisch is in a mediocre sixth position. Sasha Lentz is seventh and Yeri Foreman is eighth. The closing stages of the race. Latsko closely behind Hahn, trying to force him to make a mistake. But the three-time European champion keeps his cool with all his experience. On the penultimate lap, down to the Villeneuve chicane. Latsko is late on the brakes, hitting Hahn. The MAN runs into the gravel trap, but Hahn quickly returns to the track and even wins a few crucial metres against his pursuer. The gap is all the overall leader needs to cross the finish line first after 12 laps. <laughs> Hahn wins the first race at Zolder in front of Latsko and Halm. Hahn extends his lead in the championship by five points. 18 points span the contenders for the championship title now. I'm only in front for 10 laps and in the 11, no, in the 10 laps he comes and he's behind me and he make attacks. And the good thing is you have a, a late braking, standing wheels and give me a kick and I go straight in the chicane. And after this I have a big gap, I say thank you Adam for the contact and now I can win, so I'm, I'm very happy. Jochen Harm, the race winner from Adam Latsko and Steffi Halm, Anthony Janiek, fourth ahead of Gert Korber with Norbert Kish in sixth spot. Sasha Lentz and Yeri Foreman finish seventh and eighth, so they're on the front row for race two, thanks to the reverse grid. The grid for race two, it's headed by two youngsters. Pole position is occupied by 22-year-old Yeri Foreman, who has the 29-year-old Sasha Lentz alongside him. It will be a very tough race here. You know, the circuit is very, very tough and very hard to, to drive, so we will see what is going on. I hope I, I can manage to, to start first, and then, then we will see. The second row has Hungary's Norbert Kish third, with seasoned campaigner Gert Kurba alongside him. Anthony Janiek and Steffi Halm share the third row. As for the two men on the fourth row, they'll surely not be this far down the field for long. Top two, Adam Latsko and Jochen Hahn. Now we are in the fourth row, so we must look what happens in the front and yeah, I will go forward and we will see if it's possible or not. The field is behind the Mercedes-Benz pace truck. 
That's 12,000 horsepower and an astonishing amount of torque. On the formation lap, the excitement and tension mounts as they approach the final turn. At the start, the youngsters duke it out for the lead. Lentz and Foreman door to door with Kerber lurking behind them. As they enter the first left-hander, Lentz is ahead by a few inches. Behind them, it turns rough. Norbert Kirsch runs into Gert Kerber, who ends up in the gravel. Lentz consolidates his lead. Behind him, the battles for position are fierce. Latsko overtakes Janiek and is already up to fifth. At the Villeneuve chicane, Hahn overtakes the Frenchman and now has his chief rival firmly in his sights again. The race order at the end of lap one, Lentz leads from Foreman. Kish, Halm, Latsko and Hahn. René Reinert started from last place but is already up to seventh and now also passes Janiek. Lentz and Foreman have opened up a small gap. They're pursued by Kish, Halm, Latsko and Hahn. Steffi Halm in fourth comes under pressure. Latsko is determined to pass and goes in search of a way through. He succeeds and seizes fourth place. Sasha Lentz is in the lead, pulling clear. Foreman is unable to match his pace. Behind him, teammate Latsko is moving up and now launches an attack on Kish. The Hungarian puts up only token resistance. He allows Latsko to pass. The championship contender is now in a podium place. Latsko now has teammate Foreman in front of him. He's very unlikely to fight for his position given what's at stake for Latsko. As expected, Foreman allows Latsko to overtake. He now has his teammate and Kish's Mercedes between him and Hahn. But not for long. Hahn initially wrestles his way past Kish and then shows all his experience in dealing with Foreman. Lentz leads from Latsko and Hahn, and Foreman makes a mistake. At the Jackie Ixboch, he runs wide over the gravel, playing into Reinert's hands. Reinert is having one of his best drives of the year, moving into the leading group from last place on the grid. Reinert speeds past and takes fourth. The battle for victory approaches its climax. Lentz versus Latsko, MAN versus Freightliner. Youngster versus title hopeful. The penultimate lap, the move is made and the race has a new leader, Adam Latsko. Jochen Hahn is too far back to disturb the new order in the lead. The Bagheera Freightliner number 55 is the first to see the chequered flag. Sasha Lentz will surely be very happy with second following a great drive, and Jochen Hahn takes the points for third spot. It is Sasha Lentz's best result of the season. It can't be long before he posts a maiden victory. That's two is for me is very good for my team. I'm very happy. My team is completely happy and uh, yeah, I, I hope so for the next race. The champagne for the second time today. A win for Adam Latsko. René Reinert in fourth also has every reason to feel like a winner, justifiably following his great run through the field. Teammate Steffi Halm finishes fifth and Janiek takes sixth place. Following a great day packed with thrilling race action, the first few spectators start making their way home. At the same time, spirits are high in the trucker camp. A number of extraordinary and remarkable trucks have made their way to Zolder. It's set to be a terrific evening for them at the ETRC in Belgium. It's wake-up time on the campsite. The fans flock back to Circuit Zolder, where they'll be treated to two more races today. The race trucks are already set to go. But before the action starts in earnest, let's take a look behind the scenes. The spectacular trucks in the FIA European Truck Racing Championship are anything but production models. Carlos Barros, the FIA technical delegate responsible for the ETLC, explains the key differences between a race truck 
and its street legal cousin. Okay, when you see the truck, it uh, appears to be the same as normal truck, a road truck. The cabin is a race cab. With the, in the front, we have a big protection for in case of uh, contact. Also, the cabin is a big roll cage to protect the driver in case of uh, an accident. We have the, these special seats for competition as well, with the seat belts. All this is uh, prepared for competition. In the normal trucks, we have the engine in the front, and in that one uh, is in the back. The normal truck have between 500, 600 horsepower. This one have 1,000 horsepower. Back to the track. Jochen Haab versus Adam Latsko, the head-to-head -head that has dominated the 2016 season from the start. It is characterised by mutual respect and, almost always, complete fairness. The former champion against the upstart newcomer. They and their fellow racers are heroes to the fans, and yet they're totally open and approachable. Motorsport as it should be. Anyone may enter the paddock here. There are no secretive goings-on behind security screens. Yes, we're enjoying it very much. It's oh, a yes. great day here. The weather is fine, the track is great, uh, the trucks are impressive. Uh, oh, yeah. We're having much fun here. The customary autograph signing session is well attended as usual, and the fan village is a popular attraction in the paddock. Dark clouds over the circuit Zolder for qualifying. Hahn and Latsko against each other and the clock. Thomas Robineau rolls to a halt at the side of the track and that's the end of the session for him. Latsko posts the fastest lap time, but there's method in Hahn settling for second place. I think I have the speed, it's my strategy, the second place. So the, the second place in Zolder is a, a better position for the start. It's a clean line and you can break a little bit later. When you have a good start, you are in front. For race three, Latsko and Hahn are on the front row. Rene Reinert starts from third alongside teammate Steffi Halm. She could be the joker in the pack in the battle for championship places between Reinert and Kish. Her job is to keep the reigning champion as far away from Reinert as possible. It's uh, important for me to save the fourth position and uh, don't let uh, Norby or Gat pass. It all means Kish is behind a determined Reinet racing duo. He knows it will be a tough task getting between the pair. So I have more my focus on Gerd and um, Anthony behind me so that at least I can stay in front of them and then we'll see how the race goes after that. But, you know, I'm not really expecting to go forward. Get Kurba completes the third row. The start of the third race of the weekend, and it's a disciplined and orderly affair. Latsko defends pole position, and the field more or less dutifully lines up behind him. End of lap one. Latsko leads from Hahn, followed by Reinert and Halm. Kish is fifth ahead of Korba, Janier, Foreman and Lentz. Thomas Robineau gets in a tangle with a penalty marker. The hapless object comes off worse and has to be replaced by the marshals. The next few laps basically remain a procession with the trucks maintaining position. For once, there are precious few racing battles. Lap five, and Irvin klein Nagelvort heads into the pits. He's forced to retire. Suddenly, the lead Bagheera Freightliner, driven by Adam Latsko, slows down, and Hahn duly passes. Smoke billows from Latsko's truck. His race is over. And it only gets worse for Bagheera. Yeri Foreman is also out, stranded in the gravel. Jochen Hahn takes the chequered flag and opens up a formidable gap in the standings. Bagheera go over the limit and, and the end is, I think it's two engines broken. I can win. I'm very, very happy to make the gap. I'm very happy to get on the podium with René and Steffi. And yeah, it's a little bit of gap now. Indeed, the remaining podium places go to Reinert Racing, with Rennie Reinert second and Steffi Halm third. These are important points for Reinert in the battle for overall third place. Norbert Kirsch finishes fourth, Gert Kurber fifth and Anthony Janiek sixth. 
seventh and eighth, and therefore the front row for the last race in Zolder, Sasha Lentz and Andre Kurzim. The starting grid for race four. It's time for the final race of the weekend and a new role for pole sitter Andre Kurzim. That's the first pole position for me in the drag racing. Yes, uh, I think it will be very hard in uh, the back for me. Uh, very difficult drivers and uh, yeah, very, very hard drivers. Uh, I think I had a, a lot of work for the race. Kurzim is only 24. He has another youngster alongside him, Sasha Lentz, although he has rather more racing experience. Norbert Kirsch and Steffi Halm are on the third row. René Reinert and Jochen Hahn are one row further back. And right at the back of the grid, Adam Latsko, who's preparing to work his way through the field. I think I enjoyed the race because it's a lot of work from the front of me. At the start, Kurzim initially makes a good getaway, but after shifting up through the gears, Lentz makes his move and takes the lead. Get Kurba is already back in the pits with a technical defect. At the back of the field, Latko is past Foreman and Rodriguez and is rapidly making up ground. Lentz leads, followed now by Janek and Halm, who've both overtaken Kurzim. Latsko is hunting down Alan Law. There's brief contact between the pair. At the Villeneuve chicane, Janiek locks up and crashes into the back of Lentz. Both take a detour across the gravel. Janiek rejoins in third behind Lentz and Halm. The race order at the end of the lap. Lentz leads from Halm, Janiek and Kiss. They're followed by the dueling duo of Hahn and Kurzin, who manages to get back ahead of the former champion. Hahn is stuck behind the tank pool 24 driver. Even worse, trouble is brewing behind him. Latsko attacks Reinert in the second chicane, barges his way past and is now right behind the championship leader. Lentz still leads with Halm second and Janiek third. Behind them, it's as tight as tight can be. Kurzim and Kish duke it out. Hahn is behind them, attempting to hold off Latsko. He ultimately passes and places his Freightliner behind the Mercedes duo. But before they reach the second chicane, Kurzim is forced to cede his position and Kish wins some breathing space. The trucks race through the Villeneuve chicane. Kish takes it smoothly, but as he exit, he veers off towards the grass. There's a problem with his steering. Latsko naturally seizes the opportunity and is now up to fourth. Kish retires and is back in the pits a short time later. At the head of the field, Lentz is under pressure. Steffi Halm has closed right up behind him and he's making life very hard for the tow truck operator. Lap five and Latsko completes his charge from the back of the grid to a podium place after passing French driver Janiek. Watched and cheered on by the good-sized crowd in Zolder, Latsko produces one of his best drives of the season and makes short work of Steffi Halm. He's now up to second. A lap later and Latsko is all over Lentz. He chooses the perfect line for his Freightliner truck, breaks late and passes the MAN down the inside. We have a change in the lead. Latsko has moved up from last to first in less than seven laps. And Hahn, the championship leader, spends a long period of the race stuck behind Janiek. He finally passes the Lion truck driver for fourth on lap 10. On the same lap, Sasha Lentz is the next victim. Hahn makes his move in the Villeneuve chicane and goes third. And on the last lap, Hahn also overtakes Halm to go second. However, Latsko in the lead is out of reach on the day. At the chequered flag, the Czech ace Adam Latsko celebrates a superb victory. Partial compensation for his poor fortune in race three. I think it's a very interesting race. I start from the last position and I finish first. I enjoy it because uh, I try every lap uh, somebody passed and it's really nice, it's good. And uh, when I look to overall on this weekend, I think it's not bad. But Jochen have a little bit more points. 
the final champagne shower of the day and three happy faces. Here's the classification from race four in Zolda. Latsko wins from Hahn and Halm. They're followed by Janiek in fourth, Reinert in fifth and Lentz back in sixth. The championship standings after round seven have Haun now on three, five, six points. He's extended his lead over Latsko to 35 points. There's a change in third place where Reiner now has a point more than Kish. Behind them, it's tight between Haun and Janiek. The European Track Racing Championship isn't over yet. The season's champion will be decided in the final races at Harama and Le Mans. So there's plenty of action and excitement to come for the fans.